morning, quilt roadies. Thank you for stopping by. I am packing. Yes, I am packing for quilt retreat, Fabric Stalkers Quilt Retreat. G's going to be holding the fort down, and I'm going to be traveling over the mountain and having a grand old time, so I thought I would stop by and visit with you a bit before... Um, the party begins and to let you know that I will be delayed a few days in getting the next video up. But um, I decided that I was going to pack my whole suitcase. It has been, uh, number one, I'm packing a suitcase full of projects and then a bag for my clothes. <laughs> a bag for my clothes. Um, I'm going uh, to travel over the mountain past Mount Hood because uh, the road's probably going to be better. It has been kind of snowy around Oregon, and so there's always that uh, challenge in traveling. I'm so looking forward to seeing girlfriends, and I'm going to be stopping at a couple quilt shops and hopefully be able to do a video or two, depending on... Um, uh, time and uh, see a few friends, keeping my fingers crossed for that. But I thought I would uh, talk to you about what I packed. Uh, first, I wanted to uh, let you know that the winner of the bunny uh, wool kit is Angela Stoutinger. Congratulations, Angela. So if you email me your uh, mailing address, I will get that out to you when I get back. And you will have a grand time because there's nothing better than stitching on wool. That's that's the that's straight from the woolly mammoth's uh, mouth. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's been a little bit chaotic around. We have a lot going on in our family right now and all good but still transitional and so we've been busy. We've been very busy. Um, luckily on Sunday it was a fairly decent day and so my middle grandson got to play in the backyard and literally covered in mud, needed a bath, washed his clothes before his parents came to get him. Um, so that was really nice and I got to see my older grandson because we delivered the Tuffets uh, to the house and uh, you know I've decided that um, I'm going to try to follow that mantra of how to change my mind to be even more positive. Um, I deleted the neighborhood app off my phone because I found that it was just stressing me out and sure I may be oblivious to what crime might be going on or worrisome things might be going on but um yeah you know you kind of have to figure out what will work for you and I I found that that uh, although there were occasionally wonderful things like I liked following the lady who was tracking the baby hummingbirds in her tree I loved that but for the most part, it was watch out for this and watch out for that. And there's this person and that person. And <sighs> yeah, I need, I need less anxiety, don't you? Don't you want less anxiety? And uh, so I decided to take a break from it. And uh, as G says, if you need to know anything, I'll look at the news and let you know. So... I have taken a break. So what am I taking um, to retreat? This is going to be a totally different retreat for me. Totally different. Because I am not taking a sewing machine. I am not taking any piecing project. Since my world is 80% handwork at this point. You know, it could switch down the line, but and eventually the handwork has to be put together. But um, about 80% is handwork, which is totally beneficial to the way my brain works and my emotion works. 
it's calming for me. And um, there's just, and, and I have a variety of handwork. So I decided I'm not going to take a machine. I'm not going to take a cutting mat. I'm not going to take a rotary cutter. I am only taking handwork UFOs or whips. And um, try to uh, make some headway on some of the older projects and sprinkled with a new one here or there. And so I just thought I would show you what I have going. So I am taking this table runner, which I showed you before. It's an adorable table runner. There's really no pattern for it. All I did was um, so two inch squares on five inch squares and made snowballs. There might be a pattern, although I don't have a clue what pattern it is. Um, so it's a table runner, and all it needs is tacking down. So I'm going to tack that down. And then that'll be an actual finish, which is awesome. And I love giving myself stars for finishes. As far as a new project goes, the Button Fantasia class that I took from Helene at Cedar Ridge, I am taking that, and I have not done any more stitching on it other than that one square, but I'm going to take my thread and my buttons, and I'm going to work on that. So I'm giving myself a, a variety of different things that I want to get done. As I was digging out uh, my projects, trying to, you know, I was trying to decide which ones, which ones not, I have quite a collection of sashiko. So hold on a second. I want to show you this pattern that I am going to be um, giving away. Because I found it and I thought, why am I keeping it? It it's uh, so if you are interested in an awesome awesome sashiko pattern, I purchased this from in the beginning when they had a shop in Seattle. Oh, Jason Yenter, um, it was a beautiful beautiful shop. And one time the fabric stalkers because my uh, fabric stalker group has been quilting together since about 93, so it's been quite a while. And we've traveled and stayed in hotels and gone to quilt shows. Um, we've had tons of retreats. Uh, we raised our kids. You know, I've said this before. We raised our kids. We've gone through death, divorce, um, hardships, high moments. And we still continue to quilt. So now a majority of us are retired. There's still a couple of people working. And um, it's been, it's kind of, you know, you, especially in this pandemic, I'm, I'm stuttering over my words, but especially in this pandemic, you tend to see what, um, what survives and what doesn't. Yeah. Um, so I was digging around and I got this pattern from In the Beginning Quilt Shop and it's called the Sashiko Sampler. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I have used some of the motifs, but I've never made this whole quilt and I will never be making this whole quilt. I have too many other sashiko patterns. So I am giving this entire sashiko pattern as a giveaway. And if you are interested in trying sashiko or you love it already and want to make this, just put in the comments sashiko. Sashiko. Um, and I will give this away next time. Um, please, let me just explain to you. Subscribe to the channel. Please publicly subscribe to the channel. I want my giveaways 
you know, I don't request any postage, um, you know, no payment whatsoever, but I do want them to go to subscribers of the channel. And when I do a giveaway, just as a little explanation, I do the random number uh, comment picker and a name comes up and I click on that name and I go to their site, their subscriptions, and if they do not have a subscription to either Stitch Roadies or Quilt Roadies, then I pick another name and I do that. And I'm not kidding. There's sometimes it'll take me six tries to finally get to a subscriber of the channel. So please make sure you're a subscriber if you want to enter a giveaway um, because that's that's the only thing I want is that my the things I'm giving away go to a subscriber of my channel. No cost to you. No cost to you. So please be a public subscriber and this is a multi-page. Um, I will just open it and show you. This pattern is fantastic. So look at the look at the I mean they're beautiful. They're absolutely stunning. Huge full pattern for each motif. And you can tell which one I used. I used a couple of them because you trace over, you trace with a stylus over the design, and so there's like a ridge. There's a ridge. But you can use the patterns over and over. So I'm going to be hoping a Sashiko lover or a someone who desires to be a Sashiko stitcher gets this pattern. So while I was digging through my Sashiko box, I discovered this particular pattern. And it is a table runner. And I just have a little bit of stitching left to do on it and then to put the plain border around. So here is that pattern. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. And this thread was the first time that I used non-white sashiko thread. Um, before I was just using uh, white sashiko thread for uh, all my sashiko, but then I they started coming out with all these amazing colors and stuff. Okay, where are we now? Here's my little mini mini tumbler block quilt that just needs the binding tacked down. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to tack that binding down. I have project boxes in my suitcase. This one, some of you that have been with me for a while have seen this one because it's traveled around the United States with me in different camping trips. And this is heart to hand my sewing room. And I have almost all of the blocks done. There's just a few blocks that need to be tacked, uh, the wool to be tacked down. And so I'm going to get all of that, uh, the rest of the tacking down done. Look at that pincushion. This actually looks like a uh, Lisa from Kindred Stitcher, something she would make. It's so cute. And, um, bread. So this is a heart-to-hand pattern. I'm taking that project box. I'm taking knitting. Remember I started knitting, and so I'm taking... Uh, my knitting, because my knitting uh, instructor, Irene, is going to be at retreat, and she's going to help me. Uh, so I'm going to be doing that. And then the last cool
quilting project. I'll be taking cross stitch with me too, but the last quilting project is a primitive gatherings. Um, it's just a, a beautiful, a beautiful quilt, and it's um, heirloom rose. This is by Primitive Gatherings, and I have all of the blocks prepped and I have some of them stitched like this block is stitched. Isn't that gorgeous? So I have all of those prepped and ready to go and then you know Lisa um, she's uh, when I don't know if she still does it but when she does her blocks of the month she always used to give a freebie with each block of the month and that that freebie that year was these um, sheep to make a little wall hanging so you know there's different sheep on uh, flannel so I have all of those um, not all of them are stitched but a lot of them are stitched so I have that it's gonna keep me busy all this hand stitching the hardest part I found <clears throat> about um, getting the projects chosen and ready to go was that I'm used to having my thread, my Valdani, my pearl, cotton, my uh, embroidery floss, like right around here so I don't gather it up necessarily for each project. But given that I won't have all my thread, nor do I want to carry all my thread with me, I am going to, uh, I have been uh, sourcing out those threads from my piles <coughs> and putting them in the project boxes and um, hoping that I have all the appropriate thread. Now last but not least, on the quilting front is my Maxi Yazzie bag. This Maxi Yazzie bag that is the holder of all things Sue Spargo. Yes. All things Sue Spargo. And um, so in here, what I am bringing with me, look at, see, I got my little embellished needle case. I am bringing um, the block that I have prepped for the latest block of the month, Trade Winds. But what I really want to make headway on is this. This is the Sand Dollar class um, that I took in Arizona with Sue at Tanca Verde. And I, I love everything about it. It's... Um, it's not my normal color palette. I'm kind of primitive, and uh, but every so often I like to venture out into something new, and this was that venturing out, and I still very much love it. So I'm going to, and luckily for me, all the threads are already in here kitted with that, so I didn't have to do any um, swapping out. And it's all contained in this fabulous Yazzie bag that is absolutely meant to travel, travel with your your stitching. Oh, oh my gosh! So yeah, that's what I've got going. Um, I'm very excited about it all, and this will be. Actually, I have, my list is really long um, of people I need to stop and see. And um, I, this last week, we had an Easter gathering at my daughter-in-law's parents' house with her whole family. You know, and I did the COVID test ahead of time because there are, um, um, people with, um, you know, secondary issues with their health, 
and so I did the COVID test before I went there and it was negative and I did get my second booster uh, this last week which was um, interesting because uh, I had absolutely zero side effects to that second booster. I mean, you know, they tell you, uh, you have to wait 15 minutes and you tell you feel lethargic or a little under the weather and all that. I had zero secondary effects. What I did have was my arm was sore like when you get a tetanus shot. It was sore for two days. Yeah. I couldn't do the dishes. <laughs> they were too heavy. <laughs> So um, I was glad to get that kind of out of the way because um, we have lots of activity coming up and it's just, um, you just feel a little bit like you don't have to think about things so much. Uh, so I had that going on this last week and other than that, I can't wait, I cannot wait to share with you what I got done and and just the feelings around being able to do this just the feelings around being able to do this thank you so much for stopping by don't forget that you want to put in the comments Sasha Co if you're interested in that uh, Sasha Co pattern and Angela be sure you send me your mailing address because wool kit's coming to you. And thank you. Thank you again. I really love you guys and appreciate your company.